Hello. Oh, Shy Red Fox, I see you in the chat. Hello. Hi, everyone. It is Tuesday night, at least where I am. This is to write and have written. I'm Laura Van Arndonk Baugh, and someday I will have a catchphrase, but today is not that day. Uh, so we are going to jump right in. We got a lot of fun things to do tonight. Uh, so just real quick, uh, Gen Con was this past weekend. It was my first Gen Con to have an author table. Definitely not my first Gen Con, my first one to, uh, to try to sell at um, and so I have a lot of breakdown and a lot of things I learned there. So that will come in a future uh, chat just so we can maximize our time with our guests tonight because we do have guests tonight. Uh, and I definitely want to uh, get as much time as possible there. So actually, let me just push the magic button. Woo, magic button. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm just going to introduce really quickly. Uh, this is... Tim and I just panicked. It panicked. It's Tim Alexander, right? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Because, because I said it wrong earlier, and I'm now I can't can't trust myself. All right, it's oh, Tim Alexander it right. who has done. Uh, oh my gosh, I, I was going to pull up a list to um, to give some sample titles in the, uh, in the social media post today, <laughs> and, and I just like I just <laughs> maxed out my character run. So um, <laughs> so, um, so oh no, hang on, one second. Um, Elena's telling me that you guys are sliding mm. off the screen on her view. So, oh. um, we will just drag you over. you you look good on my screen, but we're going to make sure that <laughs> we have all the things. And then, um, Elena, if you want to give me a shout and tell me if this is working better. Oh, Shai says she can see them. You know, we're all just going to get very cozy on the screen. It'll work we'll out. Just okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right. And then Liz, I'm so sorry. Let me interrupt, uh, our, our introductions here liz mori who is doing my books and has done has completed two <laughs> and uh, is in in the progress of doing blood and bond right now um so i definitely wanted them uh, to come in and talk because uh because i can do the most <laughs> the, the most talking about how to have a professional relationship with the person with whom i have a professional relationship so and i was so excited um because when we were just bringing people on uh, for the stream. And I'm like, oh, you have a face because I've, I've heard you a lot, but <laughs> I've never seen you. <laughs> so, yes. So um, anyway, thank you guys so much, so, so much for coming in here. And I want to jump uh, right in. Guys, we are going ha to be talking um, about a lot of different audiobook related topics, but please, as always, throw your questions in the chat. And I do have a few questions that were submitted in advance by someone who knew she wasn't going to be able to make it into the chat tonight. Um, so, so yeah, they're, we're going to, we're going to jump right in. So, uh, the, we're going to start at the top. Hi, I'm an author. I have a book. I would like it to be an audiobook. I have heard things about audiobooks being, you know, kind of a hot thing right now, which is true. They are a hugely growing segment. Um, so we're just going for the sake of tonight, we're going to assume that everyone knows audiobooks are a good idea. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to invite you guys on and be like, why audio? Is it, is it okay? Um, I think yourselves. everyone Go. could just assume, assume that that's a good idea. Of course it's a good idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and to be perfectly honest, I am that person who writes books, but then a huge percent, huge percentage of my reading right now is done via audiobook. And yes, I'm still mm -hmm. calling it reading. It's still a book. Um, yeah. And, and it's just a more convenient way. For, you know, I'm staring at a screen for work. I'm staring at a screen for my other work. And then yeah. I want to relax and do something else. And an audiobook gets me out of that work mode. And, um, and it also gets me out of edit mode. <laughs> if I'm staring at a screen that I'm like, mm, you know, interest, I, I would move this adverb over here. And if it's an audiobook, it's not my problem, right? Like, so that's, that helps me to enjoy mm -hmm. it a little bit more. Uh, but it, if, we're, if we're trying to get started and, uh, and, I, and I'm looking at, okay, do I, do I do this myself, which sounds cheaper, but difficult, or do I hire a professional, which sounds expensive and also, also difficult. <laughs> um, so what can, what can, I want, I want, I want to bring this in from, from the other side. What can I, as an author do to help make that decision in the first place. And then we'll walk through like how to find a professional, which is honestly terrifying. So that was a very, very open-ended question uh, there. So uh, feel free to jump in and, and stop me from talking. 
Well, Isa, do you want to start? I certainly have some opinions, but Ooh, well, I, I, I guess <clears throat> so. It's tough, right? Like I, I love personally love hearing people read their own books. They, they've got layers of character knowledge or story knowledge, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, like they have a whole depth of layers that they can put into that performance that is, is going to be, uh, that's going to take a lot of communication for me as a, a narrator to be able to convey. So I, I love, especially like Neil Gaiman, I, I could listen to him all day. Um, but at the same time, just like writing, you know, of course, anybody can read an audiobook, but it is also a, a specialized skill that that we have spent, you know, a lot, a lot of time and, and energy and, and investment in, in learning how to do it, which includes the, um, you know, equipment side, and also the performance side. So I, I really think it comes down to kind of a, a self evaluation, how comfortable do you feel in that role? Um, maybe find some other places uh, to to practice or try it out and see how you feel about it. Um, but there's, there's so many resources. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 All right. My first thing, cause you mentioned like, you know, hiring a professional can be very expensive. Um, there, I'll, I'll get into uh, like the options that are a little less expensive if you're willing to lose a lot of your, <laughs> a lot of your income from the book. Um, but uh, one of the, one of the things, if you are worried about the cost, and it comes down to choosing professionals. I, I've, I have narrated many a book where I wanted to email the author and say, hey, don't pay me. Go go hire an editor, right? Mm -hmm. like, like that that is that should take priority. But beyond that, um, the thing that I've heard, I've heard some authors read their books amazingly, and, and Liz is exactly right. They get some really good insights and then they know the twists and turns. And then there's some authors that that don't and like the that connection like the way they write is incredible but then when they go to read it something isn't connecting or something isn't coming through and then so you have this performance that is um may sound very odd or, or hard to listen to um and the best thing i can say is is just be okay knowing that that perhaps you know it's not a, a problem with you if <laughs> if if you show it to somebody and they say oh hire a professional but show it to somebody else um, record the first chapter. If you think, if you're thinking about doing it, if you're thinking you want to go through the hours and hours of work to record this book after going through all of the trouble of writing it, um, just, just show the first chapter to somebody else. I'm like, Hey, it like has this sound to you. Um, somebody that you trust to give you an honest answer. Cause you could, you could be the perfect fit, or you might listen to an audition and be like, wow, this, these are the voices I want. So you go so before way. I respond to to anything that you just said, can you can you clarify for us because what you said about the hours and hours, like I don't think people realize how many hours go into those hours and hours. So as a professional, what's the hours of work to a finished hour of audio ratio ish? It it just depends. For me, it is about three to one. Um, about three three hours of work to every finished hour. I think Liz, uh, yours is a little higher, but Much higher, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but that is that's kind of a minimum, right? Like a minimum of three to one. Uh, uh, that, I think the minimum, average that's with a lot of experience. And I'm yes. just gonna yes. throw out that uh, now I'm I'm faster now, but when I got started, because I do some of my own audio uh, stuff mm -hmm. as well, and when I got started, it was seven, eight, nine hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And I'd come yep. out with an hour at the end. And yep. um, yeah, I got better. But <laughs> the point <laughs> is like, you need to have the time to be able to invest to do that. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, I, Shai I think... says, as Liz talks, I'm getting flashes of Ariana. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just, I'll, I can, I will just do, we'll start switching into, I'll do certain points. Do the character voices. Character voices, yeah. Um, but I, that's something I actually wanted to, to bring up. It's like part of the reason. So um, if you are, if your book is say like nonfiction, single perspective, um, kind of statement of fact, those ratios are also going to be drastically different. Lot lower. Um, the, the books that I have, I'm doing for you, Laura, that have a, a, a broad range of characters. So a lot of what I, a lot of what I spend a lot of time doing is making sure that the character voices are consistent is, you know, yeah, there's like a there's a lot of extra stuff that goes into it, which is why I would say mine is more like six to one. Um, 
and part of that is my process. I don't do things always in the most efficient way. Uh, I do them in the way that serves me best as a performer, um, which sometimes just for me is <laughs> I'm slow, <laughs> but, but, I, but, but I like quality performance. So thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, the ideal yeah. is that like, you know, you could deliver quality performance <laughs> much more quickly, depending on, you know, just <laughs> your work style. Yeah. So it comes down to his work style. Yeah. Mm. I will say that is one thing. If you are going to read a book that you wrote, it's very easy to get caught up in the perfectionism of, of needing everything to sound perfectly right. Whereas if you listen to somebody else read it, you're going to hear it and be like, oh, yeah, like, no, that's what I wanted. But when you're doing it, it's a whole lot harder to, to be like, you know, you always think like, well, I might be able to get a little closer. I might be able to do, you know, this, this and this, um, which may that's result yeah, in I had a lot longer. I had a leg up when I started doing my own work because one of the first like long pieces, long things that I did was um, was nonfiction. It's nonfiction mm. that I lecture on all the time. So mm, it was nice. it was purely a technical project for me as opposed to how do I get these words project and then um but then yeah we go into fiction and, and um elena who's in the chat uh is a voice actor and has tons of character work and that sort of thing and that's not what i do i talk to people <laughs> about sciencey things and um so shifting into you know like there are some some emotions and things that are much easier and there are some that i'm like yeah this is why we hire people you know <laughs> like um Whole yeah, different ball it's, game it's totally different yeah um, so yeah, I had something, I had some place I wanted to go, but we, we wanted, we said hours and I was like, oh yeah, we need to jump on that because, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> because for sure. I, mm -hmm. I, on the subject saw, of, of other, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, I saw yesterday, um, in one of my, you know, communities, um, somebody was like, yeah, I want to do an audio book. Can I just hit record and talk? And that's really all it is. Right. And I was like. <laughs> yes, that's totally what it is, but also, and you know, <laughs> let's hold over. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, th there's, there's a lot to it. it it's not, it's deceptively mm -hmm. simple when you just put, you know, put it in and hit play. Oh, Elaine is pointing out of the chat. I get to scream a lot more. Yes. Than I do with my nonfiction. That is, <laughs> that is yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, and, and says, I know a this... ton of, of professional voice actors who will not touch audiobooks. It, it is a very a common when I'm meeting people, and, oh, what, you know, what have you been doing? Well, audiobooks, no, no, no way. It, it, this is the marathon compared to the, you know, the sprint, the hundred, awesome. the hundred yard dash that is, you know, animation video games or uh, even commercial where you're, you're in there working like high, high, high energy for a very short amount of time versus the seven or like, you know, three, six. 10 hours. I will say to, yeah, see, that's the other thing is it's even worse when it's self-directed because like, if, uh, like the work, the couple, uh, the, 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 the sessions I've done with a, a studio for an audiobook, they're like, yeah, four hour session, go home, you know, to like we'll do it the next day if need be. When I do books by myself, I'm like, you know, start at 9am, I'll finish up at 6pm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can keep going. I can keep going. I can keep going. Right. Like it's, it's, uh, you know, so you have to, you have to watch your, your level and gelatin Special. pineapple juice it's fine it's fine yep. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that might be something too if, if you are an author and you're kind of thinking like this is a memoir or this is something that i am knowledgeable about that i lecture on and i would like to you know read it myself maybe what the investment is is investing in audio engineers or a studio to help you with the technical aspect because that is the barrier to entry i think that a lot of people don't realize a lot of people, especially, you know, creative types, maybe have a background in theater, maybe have the, you know, have the performance chops to do it. But, you know, all of this, <laughs> all the technical stuff, um, okay, at least for I, me, I was the hardest. I got to share an image <laughs> I loaded here just because I, I'm hoping for some sympathy. You're welcome to laugh too. But um, I have so many screen caps of a variation of this. Oh, um, yeah, we yeah. are, we are a... Uh, a, a hundredth of a decibel off of making levels, and um, and and I, I don't. If, if I had throwable things near me, they would be thrown. Um, so <laughs> yeah, sometimes guys, it's worth paying somebody else to cry about it. Yeah. So, but no, that's a great point that that you don't have to. It's not an all or nothing deal. You can hire someone else to 
direct and edit and all of that. And then you do the voice. Yeah. So, um, oh, here, Elena's, uh, <laughs> Shai says, I have nightmares of ACX check. Yeah. Um, and Elena's pointing out as a lead in a one hour dramatic series, I had about 60, 60 to 70% of the dialogue. And it was typically four or five hours of work per episode to record and edit. So yes, audiobooks are definitely a marathon compared to acting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even that, like that, that's an incredible amount. If you're editing your own, if you're already editing your own things, then you like, I feel like you have a deeper understanding then someone who's only ever done studio voice acting where you come in and someone else does all of that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm hoping most of us are aware of what goes on on the other side of the glass, but it, it's a lot, it, it's, it's different than having to do it yourself. <laughs> Some people do a lot of great stuff. <laughs> well, no, and miss them. It's funny too, because how, how very different things are. So in, in a completely non-pro sense, I had, an opportunity to be an animated voice wench, which was like my childhood dream. So yay, I, I got to be a cartoon. Um, but it actually was really, really difficult, not because the the voicing was really difficult, but because I'm used to having that marathon of character interaction and everything. And this is a say a line out of context, not reacting, not interacting yeah. with other characters. And I, I was so disoriented, so hung out. And, um, and yeah, it's like, oh, I have so much respect for people who can do that and make it sound okay. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not, it's definitely not a one size fits, fits all is where I was trying to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Elena's pointing out her series director was in England. She was in Indiana. So she was basically self-directing <laughs> on that project. So, oh yeah. So rough. <laughs> there are First author of... I worked with was in, uh, Alaska. Uh, so it was a four hour difference where it's weird, weird. It's weird working with people oh, like drastic time differences. So let's talk about, okay, I've made the evaluation, you know, I've listened to some authors do their own work and I've decided that it's not a road I want to go down. I've listened to myself do my work. Yeah, we have professionals for a reason. So I want to hire somebody. And, um, and this is daunting because, I mean, so many reasons, it's really overwhelming. Um, so, so let's walk through this a little bit and, um, I, I, and I, I'm going to give like the massive success story on how to do it right. That's how I got Liz. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, but let's start from where, where do I even start? <laughs> like I'm sitting here with my manuscript and my sweaty hands. What, what happens next? You know, just shout into the void and hope somebody answers. You know, are there, are there websites that are better to start at than others? What should we do? You want Liz, to you want to? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so most of my work is done through um, ACX, which is through Audible. But um, you, the through sites like Audible, if you're a self-published author, or if you um, Penguin Random House has a site called Ahab that is lets not only PRH uh, produced authors, but but produced through other other publishers as well. Um, uh, use their website to to kind of broadcast to to voice actors. Those are, those are the two big ones that I really know of. That you can use a couple other sites like Voice123, um, VO Planet is a good one. But but really, like you want something audiobook specific so that you get actors who know what they're getting into. Um, uh, and and so you know through one of these websites and, you, and it's kind of general. You you'll post the information about your book. Um, if you're really nice, you'll post how many characters they're going to be. Um, you know, uh, but generally like how long it is, what type of book, what type of voice you want, and then upload an audition script. Um, and I mean, I've never seen a book not get responses quite quickly. Um, so, you know, like it, it's when it comes to finding people, finding the right person is harder, finding the right, uh, finding, finding people in general, um, is, 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 as long as you have those sources. Um, and I think. I think you guys might have done something like this, especially if you're willing to move away from the website that you originally used. Um, you can get some really good working <laughs> relationships um, that way. That yeah. way. So, so we want to we want to post like how large is our cast, so people can have an idea of what they're going to get into. You know, genre, length, all of these things. Help me choose an audition script because. I think this oh. is a really important step that people, yeah, don't, <laughs> this is a really big piece and, and people don't realize how big it can be. Tim, I feel yes. like you feel strongly about this. I, I do. I'm sorry. I'm going to run with this one. No, no, um, please, please. Go with it. Please. We, got, we, we got 40 minutes. Go. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> please don't put the synopsis from the back of your book. It is useless because what I sound like reading that is going to sound more like if I'm reading for a commercial. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't tell me what your book sounds like. That doesn't tell you what, what I sound like reading your book. Don't do that. Um, the other thing too, if I see a lot of people will just post like an entire chapter and they're like, oh yeah, pick part of it. Well, okay. Like I'm realistically for any audition, I record a maximum of five minutes because I may do eight to 10 auditions a day. Right. And so I don't, I don't have time to read whole chapters, read two chapters. So really the best thing you can do is if there's a particularly poignant scene that you really have a certain image of in your head or um, different characters, take you know, just three, four paragraphs from a couple different sections of your book and, and string them together. Like one page of text is is a solid, you'll get a good idea for what your narrator is going to sound like um, without overdoing it. Um, but yeah, if you do a couple of different samples from across your book, that that's really the best audition that you're going to get. Um, but if you do, you know, if you do the first page of the introduction, it doesn't really tell you much. If you do the back of your book, it doesn't really tell you much. So, um, you know, just do yourself a favor. Like the things that you are going to be disappointed if they get wrong, make that the audition. And, and that way you'll, you know, you're going to be getting a good thing. That's great. Liz, did you want to add to that? Oh, I, I really couldn't agree more. I was kind of thinking back on, uh, I sent because, um, I know originally you were considering a uh, a male narrator for the uh, Shard of Alon series, and so I I did a couple segments for you, but like Tim is saying, to kind of be like this is what it would sound like in my voice, and something that was very affecting to me and kind of reassuring as a performer is as I all I, I think <laughs> it sounds really silly. I would always remember you sent me an email saying, "Well, you did that sit that scene between Shannon and Luca, and if you can do that, then I feel confident that you can." you know, do the emotional through line of my book, basically, like that, that made me feel calm or like that, that you had that kind of confidence fed my confidence as a performer. Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to capture the spirit of this. They're not, cause I feel like, and you know, and I'm sure Elena can scene. testify. <laughs> <laughs> um, because yeah, this is, this is, it's, it's a book where I have male characters who are talking about emotion and, you know, stuff. And yeah, I know it's fantasy. But the point is, if there was a lot of that stuff that was going to happen. So I went and I picked the scene that looked hardest to me. <laughs> like, like, this is the thing that would terrify me to try to do. Let's send it to Liz. And um, <laughs> so that's, um, so then when I knew like, oh yeah, she's got that. Then we're good. You know, we're, we're going to be okay. Um, and and I'll, I'll just throw out to the the way when I when I, when I was running auditions um, for Songweavers Vow, um, and I got oh my gosh I don't even know I made a spreadsheet, a hundred or something you know like reels in for that, um, and some of them were quite good uh, and some of them were, it really scary <laughs> some of them were quite good and. But then I got one from a person who had just recorded my first chapter for me. And I was like, done, like everything. <laughs> I love everything about this. Like not only what, what were they really, really into uh, the, the piece, but I knew exactly what it was going to sound like. So yeah, awesome job. You nailed that. You have me. Here we are. <laughs> so and I'm going to, I'm right. going to like retroactive fear about this audition. For years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was fantastic. And the other thing that I did, um, well, I, the audition script that I chose for a, a previous book years ago, um, and it's actually a, a, a scene where they're doing a voice acting challenge. And I'm like, here, narrator, <laughs> you know, if you can get oh, this no. scene, we're going to be fine <laughs> because I'm going to hear 15 different voices in a single um, audition. So, so yeah, I think, you know, giving something where your narrator can really show off what they can do with your, with mm -hmm. your work. Yeah. Okay. And I think also a layer of that is that like that they won't be surprised if they are a person who's like, oh yeah, I, I looked at the, I looked at the synopsis of this book. It, it sounds like it has a like three or four characters. I'm sure I can do it. And they don't know that there's going to be a voice acting challenge midway through and they're going to have to do 15 distinct voices in one. Like I wouldn't say necessarily put the most technically challenging thing, but you know, fair warning and, and content warnings. Uh, and I was just about to ask about content warnings. Like where, what, what would be good guidelines for what to include there? Just 
the most anything that you would see on a movie rating if you have it in your book please put it in there please i got halfway through a book now i i don't read the book beforehand because i like i like the sounds that i can get when i'm when i am as surprised as the reader right and like and can lean into twists and stuff that has resulted in me reading a book which i thought was one thing and it wasn't uh, and it was like, I will need a pen name if I finish this book. So, you know, any, like anything like, um, excessive, uh, you know, sex, violence, uh, drug, like, you know, um, assault, especially like anything, anything that you might see on a trigger warning on Twitter, please put that's in your book, right? Like it, it's not going to lose you narrators. It's just going to make sure that you have narrators that know what they're getting into. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. <laughs> when I when I was talking about auditions just a moment ago, you know, and I froze up for just a second on easier to dismiss um, reels that I got. Um, one of them was a reel, no warning, no label, had one scene. It was, wasn't a reel. It was just one scene that picked up mid very erotica. Like, so I'm just going mm. through listening to, mm -hmm. you know, listening to, you know, here's a sample, here's a sample, here's a sample. Oh gosh, what is going on in my head? And um, you know, no warning, nothing. Don't surprise yeah. your narratives that way either. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, and we do have a question in the chat from Shai, who's been very patient while mm. we get back to it. Um, and yes, here's our first Audible Gate question <laughs> we knew it was going to oh. come up tonight. What has been your experience with ACX? I'm thinking Audible Gate. I would like to know if people had good experiences. I didn't. And then are there other mm. alternatives beyond ACX and Find Away Voices? So um, anyone like to tackle this? Yeah. So while you're thinking, because that just came in, I'll, I'll just very briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with the term Audible Gay, it's a question of how Audible has been paying creators. Um, and there are some legitimate questions. And if you just Google Audible Gay, you'll find more than you probably knew. And now you know a lot. Um, so, but it's something that actually came up for me multiple times at Gen Con. Um, and so, yeah, so just without without compromising anybody's careers, yes. <laughs> what is, uh, you know, if, if I'm coming into this, um, well, I guess how much of it is affecting the narrator side of things, because I know it's doing a lot for the author side and, and I don't know how much you guys are directly affected by this. Yeah, it's, it's a roller coaster. Um, I've had some great experiences with ACX and audible. I've had some absolutely horrible ones. Um, there and, and there's things that I will say some some of these things they are working on um, for a while there they weren't really doing a great job of checking whether or not the author that author that uploaded a book actually owned the book um, which resulted in a lot of work going to waste uh, but um, but they they are working on that now one of the big parts of Audible Gate with a payment is is a, a very legitimate complaint the reporting is very sketchy at best um so it is uh um especially when it comes to returns uh books being returned on audible is is a really big thing and then whether when it's actually reported to you in your payment and your earnings it's it's very glossed over um first time it happened to me i read a, I, I went online i was like do people actually do this what the and and found this blog post where somebody was like oh yeah i return like one a month i don't think it affects the authors no it does it does it affects and if it's a royalty all of show us with the narrators that expects them too yeah. yeah yep yep so it's 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 real tough um now from the narrator perspective that has resulted in me doing a whole lot less royalty share um if i do royalty share it's because i just wanted to read the book um <laughs> like I, I you know i wanted to, to do it for free all right like uh, and, and put in that work and then and i expecting that i may never actually get paid for it um other than that i've kind of moved away from royalties because there are some um less than savory behind the scenes stuff um you know i i, I don't want to bash on a website but like it, it is it is what it is um yeah, no, no, it's, I understand why anyone would want to avoid it. That being said, it's a good, it, 
it is the 600 the, pound gorilla in the room like it's yes yeah 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 <laughs> um and it like acx though if you're a self-published author is one of the better resources just because of their outreach and, and and because it does result in you having an easy time getting it onto audible it is then amazon exclusive which is problematic but um if you especially don't really have the know-how or the time to learn how to get it out there to the rest of them it can be a nice way to do especially your first book um uh just just being brutally honest about it as far as other websites um actually that's a, a find a way is, is new to me i'll have to check that out um mm. but um but yeah like i said ahab is good i hear about people using fiverr i feel my my experience with fiverr has been that results in everyone getting exploited so i don't know mm. that i'd recommend that <laughs> one um but yeah other you know that you can put it on other voice acting websites so like voice one two three voices.com um craigslist i've seen some i've seen some audiobooks on craigslist um it's just you know you kind of gotta be careful i will say like if you have a a site that will protect you in certain ways um such as um one thing that acx does do right if if i'm getting paid up front when I send off those files and the author approves them, they will not put it on Audible until I get paid. And same thing, I have signed a contract that makes sure that I <laughs> do the work um, and you aren't left hanging for months on end wondering whether or not I'm actually doing anything. So, <sighs> ups that. Mandy is also good, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, half the battle. Um, mm. Yeah, Mandy is also a good site. So, you know, it's always just do your homework and uh, whichever one they all have their ups and downs <laughs> i do think that the, like you like you're saying tim the one of the main draws of a site like acx is it's near it's only narrators because yes. and and there's so many narrators in one because you can use so, um laura and i connected originally on upwork so you, mm -hmm. there's lots of different you know yes. freelancer sites craigslist recently we um found an audition on Twitter, a lot more people, if you are good at social media and outreach and you know, and you're good at marketing that way, a lot of auditions go up on Twitter. And if you like a voice acting club, uh, Elena is probably familiar. Um, those kind of, of groups will, will promote those things if they're paid opportunities and you'll get lots and lots of voice actors. The problem is you'll get a lot of voice actors. You might not get a lot of narrators and somebody might be able to put together a brilliant three minute audition and not necessarily be able to produce your 10, 15 hour book, yeah. depending on their experience. So you just have to be a little more careful, but it's, there are a lot of ways to find people to read for you. And a lot of people who are looking for that opportunity for sure. Yeah. And I will mention just really quickly, Find Away Voices is a distributor platform that has a narrator search, mm -hmm. I guess, built in. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if, if for people who are not familiar with that, uh, it is similar to ACX in that I can put up a book and say, hey, please send me auditions, but I can also upload a finished book and distribute to 40 different retailers without having to be exclusive to, you know, any wow. one of them. No, I, I, I've been quite happy with it, actually. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll but I mean, it's not the one, it's not the one true option, but it is an option. And right. I think it's a, it's a good option if you're trying not to get yourself locked into, you know, what is it like a seven year exclusivity clause? Yeah. And I just feel like that's a lot to commit to. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So now I've got, you know, I've, I've, I've got, put up my script. People are sending me stuff. I've listened to reels. I've listened to scenes. I've listened to that one first chapter that that one person made for me, you know, all of these things I've selected my narrator. Um, and so now, okay, great. We, we, we've signed a contract. We're going to get started. What can I do? To, what can I do to make this the best possible process for everyone involved? Do I just hand you a book and say, have fun, send it to me when it's done. Um, I'm trying really hard, Liz, not to be that micromanagey author, but you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, we, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, I feel like there's a balance between you know, no, 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 it's Leviosa, you know, that kind of thing versus, um, you know, uh, you know, just setting someone adrift and hoping a book comes mm. back. So where, what would give me some coaching as an author to how to make this the best project for you, which then makes it the best project for me. Uh, sure. And, and I, and I <laughs> um, I'm laughing in part because we, we have, this is a point on which we vary a little bit, um, work styles wise. <laughs> 
Um, but but I th- I think it, it's just like when you're deciding what kind of like when you're deciding, do I want to do it or do I want to hire a narrator? When you're deciding, do I want to hire one narrator or do I want to hire, hire a cast of narrators? It, I think it has to do with your personality as an author, how, like, I guess Tim said it really well earlier, how disappointed are you going to be if this isn't the way that you want it? And if you are a person who's like, well, I have a really strong vision and I absolutely have to have it this way, it's not wrong to try to find a narrator like as long as those expectations are clear, I think that's something else you could definitely include in your on uh, in your um, audition description. How much uh, how hands on do you want to be? Because it's possible to find somebody who's amenable to that and to kind of strike that balance. Um, I think that the translation from novel to audiobook is much like the translation from audio to film. Like you're gonna get a little bit of adaptation sickness. Um, it's not going to be in your mind the exact same way it is in my mind. Um, and how much do we work to kind of connect on that? Um, that I think, but like for me personally, that the series that I'm working on right now, the Shard of Elan, I, like I, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> so I personally love having access to like I all I it's funny because I feel like we kind of feel the same way about each other you're like oh, I don't want to micromanage you and I'm like I don't want to ask too many questions um but I so love having that we should resource. communicate more okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like I, I think you strike a balance um if it's a good working relationship and a long-term working relationship hopefully part of that is that just personalities match expectations match there's no right way to do it um you know yeah, there's no, like, it's not better to be super, super hands-on and it's not better to be super, super hands-off. It's just what is going to give you what you want, make you feel confident. Um, what does your performer want from you? Some people work great, like, just on their own. They're very, you know, and and some people want to make sure, like, like <laughs> I don't want to say reassurance. I hope it's not that. But, you know, it, it's it's just personality and work you know, style. Feedback, connection, touching. Yeah. Feedback, yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. I, and and uh, I think it was exactly right there. There is no, there's no like perfect answer, right? Like, because, and this is where our points differ is, is like, I like to do, especially uh, if I get like a, a nonfiction book, just hand me the book and let me go. And I'll have that thing back to you in three days, right? Like, like we can do that. Um, but, you know, especially, and it depends on genre. Like if it's got a huge cast of characters, you have a lot of different voices, a lot of different words. Sci-fi is a big one for me. If I'm doing a sci-fi book, I've got to talk to the author frequently. Because um, you can give me a pronunciation guide at the beginning. I promise you miss something. I promise I'm going to miss something on my, like if I do a read through. Um, that I'm going to want to know about later, but it really kind of just depends. You know, it's it's whatever whatever is what works between the two of you. Um, I've worked with authors that um, every half chapter I went ahead and sent it to him, and then he was super great. And you know, like it ended up being like most of the time he was just like, "Oh yeah, I love this. Huh? Keep going." I'm like, "Okay, great." But like that way, we are always on the same page. Versus some authors, I don't I don't send it to him until I'm done. Um, and you know, and so they give it to me and a week later I send it back and, and they review it. So it, it like I said, it, and, and was said perfectly, it just depends on, on the other. And it also depends on <laughs> genre and it, on voices, right? So Kyle, for example, pointed out if you wanted Morgan Freeman. Now you, you can't afford Morgan Freeman most likely, but if you want someone to do that kind of old Tennessee accent, right? Like keep it right here. You can do that, but because that's not my natural voice, I'm going to want you to review it a little more. Make sure it's always what you're hearing, right? Um, so it's like, it's all, all balance. Yeah. So, and I just think too, to, oh, good. oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, and like, and how much, because as you were talking to him, I guess I was kind of thinking too, there is some, you know, authors or directors or whoever that are just impossible to contact. And some people yes. just want to toss it in the oven and get a cake back later. And they don't want to mess with it. That's why they hired you. So like both for you as the narrator and for you as the author, like how fun is this process to you, honestly? Um, how much do you want to be involved and how much does the, the person on the other side want to be involved? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I was just, I was 
thinking back, and I'm just going to use an example from, you know, Blood and Blonde, which is in progress now, and, and you did a line from Elysia Parma, who has a very distinct personality in my head. And I was just like, oh, that's a really great line out of anybody else's mouth, but she's not that sweet, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so mm -hmm. I just asked you to, to redo that line. And, um, and I just wanted to, to throw out there for people, that kind of thing is normal. And I don't want to be doing that like every two paragraphs to poor Liz, because I'd like to keep them for the next book. But, um, but that, but that kind of review and feedback is, you know, that's allowed. Okay. So that, that is a thing that can happen in the process. And, um, and then we had like, I, I really like, it was really fun for me. I had some scenes and some character backstory that I had to cut from the book because well, it was a freaking huge book already. And, um, yes, yes. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's great because I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, we're close, but we're not quite there for the side character. And, um, and so I, I, I emailed Liz and, and you came back with, you know, well, I'm trying to find exactly. And I'm like, hold on, I got backstory. And, um, and, oh. and the, first of all, I'm just giddy because I got to use the backstory because I, you know, it was gone forever and now I got to pull it out. So it makes me happy. And, and then Liz <laughs> is happy because now they've got a place to put that voice. They know what's driving that dialogue. So, um, so I guess what I'm trying to say, it is totally normal to have some back and forth, you know, don't, don't be scared of it, but then also don't feel like you have to be, yeah. you know, like, like both of these guys just said, like, you may not need that every paragraph. So yeah. from, I think, from the, hmm, Oh, sorry. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's just say from, from the narrator's perspective, what I want, I, my ideal number of pickup rounds is two. <laughs> if uh, like, don't, you know, I, I really appreciate when an author, whether it be chapter by chapter or at the end of the book, they do a comprehensive list, uh, listen through, Mm. take a bunch of notes, send it to me, I can hit them, listen to it again, do it again, right? And that way we can usually get it done. And if they want it, if they even want a second round of pickups, which they usually don't because um, they'll give me good notes. It's a lot better than if like you send, you know, you hear that and you're like, oh, text, 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 right? And then you hear another one, oh, text, 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 text. Like, because then it's like, you know, having to like this whole back and forth where and then some of it gets lost and some of it gets forgotten. So, so you know, if you can do two rounds of pickups, consolidated. That's that's the best way. We'll still do them, <laughs> but we, you know, just the like we will feel a lot better about it if if you can be consolidated exactly. Mm -hmm. And I would okay. say, oh, the, sorry, oh, I was gonna say the other thing is, like sooner rather than later. If I am so for for me for this exact reason, I send off the chapters as soon as they are completed. That way, if there is something that I've been mispronouncing, I can stop mispronouncing it before the rest of the book. And the same with especially yeah. the, with these books that have so many characters, if there is something like that, that we want to dial in or adjust, like I want to catch it in chapter, what was that? 10 instead of when I've already done her lines in chapter 30. And, and now that has that same, you know, the way that, again, that I've envisioned it or, or heard it in my mind, I want it to match as much as possible. So Yeah, like, like, I think absolutely, you don't want to bury your narrator in pickups because they are already putting in hours and hours of work. But also, don't be afraid to to do those things and, and try to, I think the most effective, respectful thing is to try to do them as soon as possible or to spell them out in, in the beginning if you think they're going to be hard. Oh, hey, I didn't mention it for 10 chapters, but this character has an accent, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, <sighs> Because <laughs> that's the worst, having to go back and be like, oh, wow, now I've got 20 chapters to go and correct all of the lines of dialogue, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to hit Grace's question and then jump back up to Kate's here in the chat. And just because Grace's is topical, how hard is it to edit one line? Can you paste it in or do you have to redo the scene? It absolutely just depends. Because it can, it could be that it's uh, isolated or it's just a mispronunciation. You don't have to change too much, and that's you know, record it, cut, paste it, edit it to sound like the rest of it. Or let's say, you know, it could inform the entire dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, like one line said differently changes how the other person reacts, and and suddenly then it becomes a lot more work. But um, so yeah, it just depends. So let's jump back to Kate's question. Best practice for turning down other narrators after you've picked one 
thanks, but I decided to go with someone else or just no follow up at all. I've heard many different recommendations on this and yeah, it's <laughs> tough for me too. So <laughs> mm-hmm. in your perfect world, you would never hear this, but if you did hear it, what should it sound like? I don't know. I, our job is 98% like Elena, back me up here, right? Is you, boy, I can't see the chat, but I you know I've got at least one other voice actor besides the two of us. Our job is to be rejected. <laughs> Um, we can take it. We can take it. it, it it's okay. Um, yeah. Or I so. like something that I have seen on a lot of independent auditions recently is they get, they give you the option. Do you want to be notified mm-hmm. if you are not selected? And then, you know, usually it's a form letter. I love, I mean, it's not reasonable. If you get a hundred, a thousand submissions, you don't, I, I personally don't feel like you need to, like, I appreciate it. Of course, I love feedback, but you really don't need to write a thousand unique emails to us. Like that I've sent out, like Tim was saying, you might send eight to 10 auditions a day. Like I do love hearing from people. I love making connections where I can, but at the same time, like that your time is valuable too. And uh, there's nothing offensive about a form letter. Hey, we went in with another direction. Would you like to be added to a mailing list for future auditions? But like, but as actors, part of our professional expertise (laughs) is expertise in in sending auditions and then you know it's no reflection it if you know that this is not new information but you know it's no reflection on us if you decided to go with something else it it doesn't mean someone else was was better or or anything just if i'm not the right fit i'm glad you find found the person who was Yep, not my turn. If it tells anything, I can't tell you the number of auditions that I've gotten a positive email back where they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we'd really like you for this part. And I'm like, what part was that? Well, you know, I have to go back and like look through like it's it's OK. You know, like was said, you know, it's it's nice. Like, like I'm not going to be mad that you sent me out like, hey, we went with somebody else. But just, you know, be polite. Please don't be like, yeah, you were horrible. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I decided to read it myself. Uh, but it's, you know, any, any general wow. message is good. It's like okay. the, the same thing that you'd want as a, like, you know, as a, as an author, when you're submitting to publishers, submitting to agents, right? Like, I feel like all of us creatives, our job is we, we get turned down a lot. Um, what would you like to, what would you like to have? Do you, are you a person who would love to have a, I'm sorry, please know yeah. that this is no longer on the table. Are you a person who'd prefer to just put it from your mind and never think of it again? Um, chances are as a percentage of narrators who feel the same way. Well, and I think knowing that, like you just said, you might submit a dozen auditions in a day, you know, that takes the pressure off because I don't feel like you've spent the last three weeks just waiting for my email, right? Like Mm -hmm. that, that's good to know. I can, I can create a different image at the other end of my email that, you know, you're, you're not going to be crying into your chocolate at the end of this. So, okay. I have been joking with this. I want to like respond to one, one rejection email. I'm like, Hey, sorry, we went with somebody else. I just want to be like, What? What, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no, I promised. I told them yeah. I would get this one. <laughs> like, little Susie uh, needs her medicine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, like I, I don't want to make people feel less important. Like, like, like I do genuinely. I, I try to choose projects that I feel passionately about, and I, and I want to sit do. Down, yeah, that I want to do. That I, that I think would be really cool. But part of how I can do my job is I I have to kind of set it and forget it. If I get to be a part of that project, awesome. If not, I'm really, I don't keep track of, I really don't keep track of my auditions because there's so many and most of them are just going to be nothing. And that's no reflection on anybody. Good to know that that helps because sending no's is really hard. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, So if we have people uh, here who, and and I'm so sorry, we're like closing on the hour. Do you guys have time to go over or are we, are we doing? I've got time. Soon? Yeah, I'm okay. 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 Because uh, later I, for you guys. I still have story. questions. So, um, <laughs> but if we need, if we need to wrap, we can. Um, but if, if we have people who are listening to this, who are thinking, well, I've always, like, I would always wanted to be a cartoon voice. It was my childhood dream right there, you know, and I would love to get into narrating. What is, what is, what is a way that one can get started with this? <sighs> Tim looks like the answer is the, the, the narrator genie. You find the lamp, you rub it, and then, you know, no, it's, what do you, what do you one like? day, is that not how it works for everyone else? <laughs> one day you just look down and you're like, oh, I've been doing it. Whoops. Uh, 
No, it it is super hard. Honestly, the best thing you can do is um, take classes um, online or in person. Yes. Take take classes. That's a good way to meet people. A good way to uh, Liz got me started on audiobooks, and now that's pretty much all I do. So uh, it, you know, <laughs> like it's um, making friends that can direct you to new resources, and and then eventually you can pay it forward. Um, Sign up for for all those you know like uh, like uh, everyone including me sometimes bash on like pay to play websites like like voice one two three but they're not a bad place to get started get practice or like ACX grab some of those you know like um less than stellar looking auditions you know just go for it anyway just to like get you know get some practice do auditions like that's if yeah. you can find auditions whether it be ACX on a website Twitter whatever. Do the auditions. Auditions are great practice, even though you're not going to get the first 100 to 200 jobs you audition for. I know that's a dismal number, but like it's kind of just what it is. Um, but yeah, auditions are great practice. Make friends. Just, just, and be a nice person. People, I have gotten so many. I, I <laughs> got pulled into voice acting by finding places that I could audition for things. People are like, well, you're not really what we're going for, but you were pleasant. And then they call me back later. Right. Um, it, it really does make a huge difference. So um, and if you can't find the work, make the work. I always say like um, uh, if you can have fun just like recording. Um, what was it? Uh, Lizzie used this uh, public libraries will let yes. you volunteer to do audiobooks, Right. I was going to say there's a site called LibriVox, uh, which is all public domain books. Uh, so I read for that's that's definitely how I started out because I was, you know, I was learning my equipment. I was just starting out in voice acting and and trying to build some confidence. So it is, it's a free library of, of audiobooks that are um, not royalty free, public domain is what I was trying to say. They're all public domain works. Um, so I've read cookbooks and histories and, and all kinds of things just to see, you know, to gain some confidence uh, and learn, you know, build stamina. Cause this is a stamina game Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. But at the same time, doing audiobooks and producing audiobooks, to my mind, because um, I am not a technically savvy person, um, and learning my equipment was one of the biggest barriers to entry, especially in this day and age when almost all auditions, including auditions through studios and agencies, are done remotely. You have to have an intimate knowledge of your equipment. And just yeah. doing it and doing your own editing will really teach you about your space, about your mic, about everything that you need to know. So there's lots of places to do it for free or even just for fun. I, I did a whole book um, that I just sent to my friend mm -hmm. she was enjoying it. Like I just read her bedtime story. I did a chapter every week or so and, and just send that to her just for the practice because and because I love reading aloud. <laughs> but like, like there's lots of different places. Um, and, you know, of course, classes and things like that. But find some low stakes um places to get your feet wet yeah and re related i saw earlier uh kyle asked uh how you maintain motivation <laughs> <laughs> and uh this is highly related um he, uh the thing that we always hear people tell us is if you could do anything else you would um and that's not like a oh you don't have the qualification uh, to do other things, but like you, you find yourself like you, you love it. You, you keep coming back to it. Like you, you just can't, you can't get away no matter how, how hard you try sometimes. Um, and, and that like, you, you just have to have that intrinsic love for the creation. And that's why I say like, make your own work because you, you have to just be enjoying doing it. And, and that's the best books that I have done. The, my, my favorite books that I've done have been with authors that you know, they weren't making any money off of it. I wasn't making any money off of it, but they wrote a great book and I loved reading it. Yeah, like it is, that's the best way to maintain motivation and the best way to get into it really is, is just to like find that love for whatever it is that you, part of it you want to do and just hang on to that for dear life. <laughs> and find a community. Yeah. You know, find other, like that lot, I mean, especially right now, and especially a lot of people who have were previously in live theater, because that's become a lot more difficult, are moving into voice acting. Find some other people, friends, especially like if you can make, if you have, like, if you are a voice actor, make friends who are writers, <laughs> you know, things like that, who want to hear their, who want to hear their scripts on their feet 
or or something or other voice actors like find some other people to share that joy with so you can all kind of help each other remember like like this is something that that uh that tim and i do for each other certainly that that when i am having a day when it's just hard to make myself send out another 20 auditions that i'm not going to hear back from like remembering the joy of it, the joy of play and, and why this, this career is the only career. As Tim and I'll saying. tell you part of this that <laughs> nobody else wants to tell you, find people that you can complain to. Cause sometimes it's just frustrating. <laughs> I've, I've had times like working on an audiobook, especially where I'm just like, so frustrated with like, the the editing process or sometimes the the, the grammatical errors and, and a couple of unfortunate but like just like the the nitty-gritty of narrating it's nice to know that you're not insane or just incompetent and, and it's like actually something that other people experience i'm sure this or i'm sure this goes for writers too like you're like trying to you can't figure out a passage or something you're just like oh talk to another writer they're like yeah screw that book right like you know uh um so yeah, find people you can complain to. That's a huge help too. <laughs> I think just sent uh, you, a text you mentioned... to my creative group last night that said writing is hard. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I quit. Stupid. Yep. Yeah, and your non-writer ahead. friends can go. Oh yeah, I bet it is. But it's it's different. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. Like Tim mentioned earlier that I that I helped him get into doing audiobooks. That I, I remember him being kind of like, <laughs> oh yeah, audiobooks. How do you do it? And I'm like. Would you like to come over here? No one wants to be over here. I need someone who understands. The hellfire like, glowing okay. through the door behind them. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. that segues pretty well into a question that we had submitted, which is, do you choose certain genres when you take on projects? And then with that, do you read similar books for fun as the ones you record? Or do you like to keep like you're, those things totally separate like this is workbooks and this is for leisure books well admittedly right before getting into all this i was in grad school so i already wasn't reading for fun anymore and so like uh admit like admittedly i spend most of my day reading and so i don't i don't really read for fun anymore i don't I like uh, for fun. Um, so I choose the books that I used to want to read for two reasons. A, because then I have an opportunity to read them anyway. Um, and B, you're better at it, right? Like I, I've read so much science fiction, so much horror that I know how the, I know the flow of those books. I know how, how those things are going to sound because, you know, obviously every book is different, um, but they, you know, everything has a similar like vein. And so if you understand that and you have an intimate interaction with those uh, from your from your experience reading, um, that is, you know, that's going to make a huge difference on your performance. Um, sure. LeVar Burton, uh, you, have, you know, reading Rainbow uh, fame related to this and many other things, but um, and now LeVar Burton reads one of my favorite things that he's ever said is, is read everything aloud. Right. If you read a book, read, you know, the back of a bottle of, of soap, whatever. Read it aloud, and then like it's, you're gonna get that. And so I, I find that with with my the books that I choose to read, it's always the ones that I would want to read. I would if I looked at a store and wanted to pick it up and read it, those are gonna be the best performances. And if you're happy and passionate about something, you're going to put more joy and energy into it, and that always always translates. Yeah. Okay. For a prime example, if you. Beware, it's offensive and vulgar because it was written by a British comedian. But if you want to hear me just like have way too much fun with the book, go go listen to uh, Super Nice Monster Squad because that's one of those books that I was just like, this is this has got to be a bad book. And it was amazing and it was so much fun. Uh, and it's definitely like the, the style that, that you know, you can really just <laughs> just go all out on. Um, yeah, it's it's the books like that are great. Okay, so so I mean, obviously, the goal is never to be like I'm drudging through this project and I hate everything, but you can actually like turn your, your, your fun reading into your work and get paid yes. for it. So that's awesome. That's good. And like Tim okay. would say, you get manuscripts for free. For free? <laughs> we'll just send you books. It's the best <laughs> job ever. <laughs> reading them takes a little bit longer than otherwise. It does. But yes. anyway, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so 
uh, you know, with that, you know, what are your favorite types of trope or story types? You know, is there something when you're like, oh yes, another love triangle or, oh no, another love <laughs> triangle, you know, like you, are there, are there any that you just really want to sink your teeth into? Like if anybody's listening to this and going, I need them on my list right now, you know, what is, what is, what are we at? Hmm. Liz, you want to start with this one? Uh, Liz can't take I on any more projects so. right now. I'm sorry. I've got yeah, to go. I'm <laughs> midway through a, through a series nah, that yeah, I'm yeah. fortunate enough to feel very strong. I, I will say what, what I was, what was kind of running through my mind is I, I don't want to say I do have favorite characters. And if I am feeling like a little worn out toward the end of the day, I'll like look at who the perspective of the next chapter is. And I'm like, Oh, it's this, I could do, I could do one more. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love, um, so the same, I love thing high fantasy. Do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love high fantasy. And, and I think when, as soon as I saw song weaver, that's part of why I went to go look for it and read an excerpt from it. It looked like exactly the kinds of books that I grew up reading and I, and that I wanted to read. Um, yeah. <laughs> My two personal favorites, anything with the country dad in it. Hmm? I love the country dad. There's so much fun to play. Like the the moment the the protagonist walks onto a, a farm and this guy walks out, what do you want here? Get out! You know, I love that character. I I, you, I can be incredibly bored of the book, and then that performance is way much way better. Um, but I will say the other one too, and, and and if you ever find if you can find audiobooks, especially if you if you like anime, one of my favorite things I've gotten to ask an author, I was like, I was reading it and I was like, this sounds pretty anime. How anime can I be with this? And he was like, "Oh, do it." And like that's you know that's when you can have because it's like full like you're acting for animation, uh, right? Like you you get to do those over the top. A lot of a lot of audiobooks have a lot of authors like you need to be kind of low key and you know grounded, and that's good. You know that's that's a great performance too. But when you can just like let loose, that's that's so much fun. So I will like anytime I see one of those uh, uh, open for audition, that I'm like that sounds pretty anime. After it. That's pretty anime. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So my next question is totally selfish. It's just for me. So um, I am, like I said, doing some some of my own recording now for for side projects from a Patreon and such. Um, and uh, back in in 2019, in the before times when we were traveling, um, Elena and I were guests of honor at an international con with um, with Grace, also in the chat, and I got laryngitis. And so I'm trying to do my speak, oh, my, my, my talks. And then I also like, we were on a podcast and I opened my mouth and literally nothing came out. And so you guys talk more than anyone. You have to talk when we're, when we're having, uh, these, these, you know, hour eight of, of, of recording, I made the joke earlier about pineapple juice and about gelatin, like give us all the, tr all the tricks. What, what are you, what do you, uh, what do you, what do you cheat it with? These are the perfect two people because we have very different <laughs> tricks that both work. So this is good awesome. stuff. Liz, you want to start? I'm jealous of yours, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's kind of one of those like know thyself kind of a thing. And this is why that we're so wildly different. Um, like for me, if I if I can feel myself having a rough voice day, I, I do. Uh, I try to. Well, I don't really drink alcohol. I try to avoid um, dairy. Um, those are kinds of things that for me personally, I know will make it harder for me to give a strong vocal performance. Uh, I swear by uh, that Ninjom Peipao Koa, the like low quat syrup you can get at its Chinese market. Magic. I can be I can be having the roughest day and I can get through at least a half an hour if I really need to be in the booth for something that will set me right up. Uh, and the throat coat tea, you can get that. Um, I mean, it's probably not brand specific, but that one particularly has like that slippery elm and, and things and lots of honey, hot water, um, and all the old standbys <laughs> and stay hydrated. The, the, yes. the best and most upsetting advice that I ever got, but it's 100 percent true. How hydrated you are today is a reflection of how hydrated you have been for the last week. It is not something you can fix overnight. It is no. not something you can do to prep for an audition. You just have to be hydrated all the time. It's how I know that I'm in a, if I'm in a class or a workshop with other voice actors, I know because we all have to go to the bathroom every hour. <laughs> yeah. Number one. Yeah. Uh, so first I'll tell you the, the official advice I got, I, I got from somebody who, who like studies this and then I'll tell you my anecdotal practices. Um, the, the, the official <laughs> advice is, is the moment you stop speaking, 
your throat starts healing. So when you're done with a long session, you know, when you're like you after you do your cool downs, because warm ups and cool downs are important, um, just be quiet and relax and, and you know, like really just just take that time to to be silent for a little bit. Um, I know it can be hard, especially if you like talking enough that you chose a job that does eight hours a day of talking. Yeah, you know, it's it, it can be hard, um, but it is it is important. Um, now, my personal practice is tea, tea is good. I like tea a lot. That's a good choice. Um, uh, I get a benefit from this. Liz does not. But I, I like <laughs> part of my marketable voice is the little bit of gravel I have. So after a long day of recording, I get a glass of whiskey and I sit down with that and just just quietly sip that. Um, that's a wonderful Wonderful fix. Uh, like I said, warm ups are really important. I rap before, not like my own rap. That'd be nice uh, one day. But uh, uh, I will rap along with other more accomplished rappers in the morning to get like your diction up and everything, um, and then do that again afterwards because it's kind of like you get to just kind of have fun and, and um, get back to a comfortable place. Um, that helps a lot. Uh, yeah, um, and pineapple juice. And it was funny you mentioned pineapple juice. Um, uh, a voice actress named Tara Platt recommended this to me, and I, I've I've loved it ever since. It's seltzer water and pineapple juice. I add vodka, but it's uh, delicious, and it's it's without the vodka too, um, and it's really good for your throat, and it and it does really just just soothe it, and you can just kind of relax with it very very well. Great, I, I'm I'm glad I, glad we have the pineapple juice like added uh, idea now because in 2019 I didn't know that, so Elena kept giving me Jello. And I hated mm. it, but I was just croaking out, so I was taking anything I could get. So yeah, so okay, pineapple juice, vodka. Probably the podcast will get real interesting, good, but that's okay. I'll, uh, <laughs> think. Okay, um, you know, thank you, thank you for those because I, I uh, you know, it, I, I think we don't realize when we're just talking, you know, how much vocal quality can actually vary. And then you play, first of all, you play something back and you're like, oh my gosh, who's speaking? That's terrible because none of us hear our own voices anyway. But, um, but then, you know, to realize, oh my gosh, like I didn't know I had a rasp, but you know, it's, it's spring and there's allergies and now I can hear that, you know, those kinds of things. And, um, it goes back to, you know, doing it yourself versus hiring a pro, I think is what I was you know, and trying, trying eventually to circle around to is, um, you know, just being able to take care of all of those little pieces, um, yeah. for that. Now, so let me offer a word of warning. <laughs> Once you feel it and, and hear it, you can't unhear it. You can't unfeel it. I never knew how dehydrated I was or how badly my throat hurt or how raspy I was until I started voice acting. And now I'm always hyper aware it's so frustrating. I can't. I can't un unfeel what's happening in, inside. Um, That's so the threshold for something being wrong. It's so much lower. Like I yeah. was just saying last night, like the littlest tickle, and you're like, "Oh no, what's happening? Oh, I gotta, I gotta do something about yeah. this." Right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so enjoy your existence of not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> But it's your it's your professional you know it's it, at this point it's it's your professional concern and yes. and it's probably better. Because how many people are actually damaging their voice without being aware of it and, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, and, and I, you know, you were talking about, Liz, you were talking about, you know, your hydrating is, is your last week of hydrating. I just came off Gen Con, which was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, I still, it's, it's been two days and I'm still slamming water like nobody's business. Yeah, like recirculated air right. too and talking and talking, projecting out. Because that's something else I wanted to mention too. I mean, whether or not you're doing voice acting, but especially if you're going to do voice acting or thinking about doing your own book, very, very worth taking a class on vocal health or like a basic voice acting class just for things like vocal placement. There's mm -hmm. there's certain, you know, there are some days, well, like since we mentioned Ariana earlier, there are some days when I can do Ariana, but not Shannon. And there are some days when I can do Shannon, but not Ariana. I'll lose different chunks of my register depending on what's going on with me um, and different places, different placements, different characters are harder on me than others. So the same with like different levels of, of exertion, like Elena was talking about lots of yelling, like lots of yelling is going to do a lot more to you than lots of, um, you know, speaking at a normal volume. Yeah. So just kind of and, being aware of your instrument. And just knowing, like speaking in general, everything from diction to projecting everything, but 
you know, we were talking about people doing their own audiobooks. There was a very, very iconic, iconic author, like justly famous, one of the top names of the 20th century. And I listened to his audiobook, and his entire thing was down here with his vocal fry. And I, one, really hard to understand. Two, like, Never a variation in the whole. I think I nearly drove my car into a tree just to you know, pass it. And it's just, and I, I, great story, great author, really could have had somebody else read that and it would have been a better book, you know. And, um, and I just think, uh, I'm positive they said, okay, he's a really big name. We'll get him to do it because people will want to hear, hear him do it. And he didn't know, like, you probably could ask him what vocal fry was and he'd be like, I got nothing. And, um, but, but you guys can be like, Oh, this is how to fix this. You know? So, yeah. So, um, Oh, Oh, Oh no. Kate's asking for a teaser of Elan characters. I don't know. We could, we could roll <laughs> us out. Well, I feel like almost everybody is in the last book who's in this one. Except for, I don't know. I never know what spoilers. I'm so worried about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, First of all, I'm, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Like, I, I, I do have control of the chat. I can slap them down if, if you are like, oh, that's not what I signed up for and I'm not getting paid for this. Like, that's legit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you are in, you, you are working on book two and everybody is waiting for book four. So it, you're, you're not going to be like, oh, golly. Spoiler over, but. I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not that fast. <laughs> we'll just, we'll, we'll skip, I'll skip book three and we'll meet in book four. <laughs> Um, no, like book, book four is in edits right now. And, um, what you, what, what, how, how do I say this nicely? I'm hip deep in chocolate, dark chocolate. Like that's where we are right now. Um, so yeah, it, it is. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, all that to say, um, it's not Liz's fault. I got her the first one later in the process and so they're just playing catch up right now that's, that's how that is so um so anyway would you would you like to just uh in 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 a voice say that we are going to wrap up tonight and go raid elena is, is that a thing we could ask for uh oh sorry yes what <laughs> sorry i am i am totally putting you on the spot and you want to bill me feel free so <laughs> No, absolutely. No, no, no. I mean, I'm happy to do it. Explain the prompt one more time. <laughs> we are we are going to wrap up tonight's episode and we will be uh, raiding and sewing's half the battle. Oh, okay. Um, you want to take a moment while I speak to people? Like, there we go. So, hey, everybody. While, while Liz is, is preparing, we are going to uh, wrap up. This is September, so if you have found tonight or other nights uh, helpful and useful to you, this is the month to subscribe because it's cheaper, and I would very much appreciate that. Use your Amazon Prime account, then you can do it for free. Um, and then next week is our create-in, so bring a project. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that um, since... Well, we've been talking a lot about Audible Gate and things like that. And one thing that we can really do is try to help independent creators. Like, and one way that you can do that is just by like raising awareness about podcasts like this one and joining communities and things like the, the create-in that you mentioned. And and something else that we can all do right now is go in a raid uh, sewing is half the battle, because that sounds like a lot of fun to go and look at too. That was I'm delightful. Gonna go. I'm, gonna I'm go. just going to click that and like <laughs> replay it. And it was great. So that was fantastic. All right. Um, hey, thank you so much, Liz. Thank you, Tim, for joining us. Um, thank you. We are going to, uh, to I, I should probably actually start the raid. Hold on. I got so excited. Um, <laughs> I can't talk and type at the same time. Okay, raid is going awesome. So <laughs> raid call is everything is connected. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I will see most of you next week. And we will, uh, I'm pretty sure next week's the create and I really hope I said that correctly now that I've publicly committed. Okay, we'll check a calendar. That's it why I have now. a calendar. <laughs> All right, take care. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> take care. Bye, everybody. All right.